full disclosure, okay, uh, this child right here is my son, Scott, and these are his friends, Wyatt and Charlotte. Um, I do not know what questions they're going to ask, uh, especially these two, because they ask some pretty silly questions sometimes. Uh, so we're going to see exactly what happens, okay? Come on in. You guys ready? Yeah. 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 All right. Wyatt here has own, hasn't read any of the book actually, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, what kind of questions would you have? Uh, my first one is, what is his motive for uh, everything that he's doing? Is he trying to get back to something? Is he trying to escape something? First, let me just tell you exactly what the book is about. All right? So the book is about this boy named Scott, who something happens, his parents give him some really bad news. And because of the bad news, he becomes really sad and depressed. So there are times where, where somebody would be very sad and upset to the point where they don't want to be bothered. They want to just go off to their room and go to sleep. I don't want to deal with the world today. I'm going to go and just not be bothered with anything. I want to forget everything. I don't want to deal with it. And that's how Scott feels in the book, the main character. He doesn't want to deal with all of those bad things that are happening to him at that moment. And what ends up happening is, because of that, he falls into this world, this other world, this dream world, where he is stuck in. He can't get out. He wants to get back to his parents. He wants to get back home. And he meets one character who tells him, the only way to get back home is to go and defeat this monster, this beast that has taken over your dream world, that is corrupting it and making your dreams into nightmares. So Scott has to go and face this creature known as Reckon, this evil shadow monster that wants to change all of his good, nice dreams into nightmares. So that's what he has to go into. Uh, my second question is, um, why, uh, actually, what are some of his, um, uh, people that he meets along the journey. Scott meets a couple of different characters. Uh, the first character he meets is a cat named Lynx. Lynx kind of directs him to where he's supposed to go. Okay. Uh, another character he meets are the, the Prairie Knights. The Prairie Knights are these little prairie dogs that are actually part of a kingdom. They're part of royalty and they fight for valiance and valor and honor and definitely justice. Uh, one of the other characters actually is this character right here. Uh, her name is Woogie the Witch. Woogie, Woogie, Woogie. Woogie the Witch. Uh, she's a little girl who has actually, her, the rest of her family is actually captured. And she has to go and try to save her family. Uh, Scott ends up helping her try to find them as well. This is one of my favorite characters in the book, other than Scott. Uh, mostly because Scott, I based off of my son, who you know. And Wookiee the Witch is based off of my goddaughter. Those are two people that I really hold dear to me, and that's one of the reasons why I started writing this book. So, one of the cool things about her, too, you see on her robe, she has all these little patches. All of these patches show different memories of hers. There's a soup in the back. Yeah, it's one of the cauldrons. Yeah, it's one of the cauldrons. And one of the cool things, well, my illustrator, he's so good at this. He put pictures from the book inside here. So like the Boskage picture I had before up, that picture's right here on her sleeve. Yeah, you see right here, there's actually one of the, the Prairie Knights. So throughout this whole thing, and Reckon is right there, the evil Reckon. So throughout all of her patches, you can see parts of the book. So Reckon kind of looks like an oversized cat with some more things on it. Well, yeah, Reckon, Reckon, the way that I describe him, is a giant lion made out of smoke and fire. So his claws... The, they're dark shadow claws that could scratch you, but instead of scratching your body, they scratch into your soul, and they tell you the darkest, deepest things in your heart. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's what you. Uh, what, what inspired you on this book? Ah. Uh, 
The tough question. Okay, so uh, the inspiration for this book, um, it actually happened about 11 years ago. It was when Scott was a very baby baby, really, really young. Um, me and my wife, we were going through some hard times, and I was wondering what Scott would think about. What would he feel? How would he feel if he knew that his parents weren't having a um, good time with each other? They, they were they were arguing a lot and stuff like that. What would he, what would he, his emotions be? And that's what started me writing this book. I wanted to see what my son, because me as a parent, I think more about my children than I think about myself. So my emotions came secondary to his. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. No? All right. Thank you. Hey, Charlotte, so uh, how much of the book have you read? I have read half of it so far, but so far I'm, I, I actually really like it. It's you said that you can relate to a little bit of it, which is good. That's what I wanted. Uh, what questions do you have for me? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a bit lengthy, but, um, well, lengthy, sorry. Um, if Scott is in this hypothetical world in his dreams, how large is the time difference? Because let's say he was in there for seven hours straight. How long would it be in the real world? Or what if he was in there for two weeks? Uh, okay, so the time difference between Sonomia and the real world is, it varies. Everything in Sonomia changes, so even time could change. And in the later books, because I am working on a book two and a book three, in the later books we'll see how much of a difference it is when it comes to the time. Some people will be like they were there for months. Other people will be like they blinked. Lynx, the cat. I feel like he was based off of the Cheshire cat because some of his personality, the smile, personality in general, etc. I feel like it's based off of him. I haven't read too much, so I don't know too much about him, but I feel like there was at least a little grain of inspiration from the Cheshire Cat in there. And the fact that the cat has a beard is hilarious. Beardy cat. Uh, Lynx, yeah, Lynx does have a, a definite um, inspiration from various things, uh, one of which is the Cheshire Cat. Uh, there's also a part where he talks about who he is and he says that uh, he is sent from the one who stands who, who carries you when you're feeling at your worst uh, and that's actually a little bit from the poem of footprints which is one of my favorite poems so to me to everybody it's going to be different but to me lynx is more of an angel He's there to watch over you, to help you through the hard times, even though he kind of vanishes a little bit every once in a while. Just like, goodbye, I am no longer here. You're on your own now, Scott. But wait! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he has a bad habit of doing that, but uh, it's, it's really meant to be exactly how life is. There are people who will pop into your life, and the second that you're like, okay, help me out here, they pop out. And they might be just there for, just to teach you a lesson or something like that, which is what Lynx is always trying to do for Scott. He's always trying to teach him something, 